Look, look at this. Look at this. That's Bob. So Bob, Bob must see the other cat. I don't see the other cat, but Bob must see the other cat. Uh oh, I hope there's not gonna be a fight. Stella, Splash, Simba, Boo, Sammy, Richard, Nancy, Goldie, Ziggy, Ringo, Eva, Hydrox, and Ditto. The Lucky Pharaohs. Today is Valentine's Day, and I was looking for some kind of a treat to give to the cats today that they haven't had, and I found this in my cabinet. These are Bocce's Cat Fish Wellington Crunchy Treats. It's a salmon, sweet potato, and seaweed recipe, and they are little hearts. Can you see the treats? They are little heart-shaped treats. They smell very fishy, so I thought the cats would like to try them today. Here's Ringo. Here's Ziggy. Ziggy, would you like to try some heart treats? Here, you wanna try them? I already gave two to Boo. I don't know if the cats are gonna like these. That's Nancy. Is Nancy gonna steal them? There goes Sammy. Ringo's here and Richard. Ziggy loves fish. Oh, Richard's gonna steal it. <gasps> you have your own, Richard. Here you go. There's for you, Richard. Here you go, Sammy. Two for Sammy. Here you go, Ringo. Two for Ringo. Look at this. Ringo's right here. I'm gonna give two to Nancy. Here you go, Nancy. Two for Nancy. Sammy doesn't like them? Sammy, here. You could eat them. Richard, eat them. Here, Richard, eat your hearts. So Nancy's eating hers. I don't know if Sammy likes them. And there's Ringo. Is Ringo gonna taste one? He's eating it. Oh, look, Richard's eating it. They're very crunchy. Did you like it, Ziggy? All right, look, they're all gone. I don't know if Sammy ate hers or someone else ate Sammy's, but yeah, that was good. You want more? Who wants more? You want two more each? Two more. Two more Sammy. Two more Richard. Here you go, Ringo. Who's eating what? So Sammy doesn't like these. The two I gave to Sammy, she didn't eat them, and now Richard's eating them. Ringo. I'll give another to Ringo because he's the biggest of the cats. Nancy, did you get yours? There, okay. Everyone's happy now? You're happy with your treat? You're happy with your little treat? We're good? Here's Splash. There's Stella. Splash, would you like a treat? Here you go, you wanna try these? Two little hearts? Remember, Splash is afraid of new new food. He's afraid of new treats and new food. You don't want him? Here. You know. Stella got up. Stella, you want to try some? Stella is the opposite of Splash. He's afraid of trying new foods, and Stella usually loves trying new foods. She's a foodie. But she's not always the biggest fan of fish. I don't know if she's gonna like these or not. Oh, she ate one. All right, so Stella has decided she likes to swallow these whole. She didn't even chew them. She just swallowed them. You guys want two more each? You want two more each? Here you go. One, two, three, four. Hey Simba, you wanna try some treats? There you go, you gonna eat them? Okay, good job. You want two more? All right, Simba liked these treats. Is he gonna steal Splash's? You gonna steal Splash's treats? Splash still has all four of his treats there. Okay guys, I gotta finish giving everyone else their treats. Good? Glad you enjoyed your treats.
Remember, Simba's the treat thief. Here's Boo. He's been laying in his bed. There, Boo. You want two more? Boo, you want two more treats? Boo, you want two more treats? Boo. Let's shut this. It's too cold. Okay, shut that. It's cold. Here. You want to eat your treats? Here. I just gave Boo two more treats. Is he going to eat them? Good job. Good job, Boo. I have two cats left, and they are Goldie and Little Eva. So here's Goldie. Goldie, you want some treats? And there's Little Eva. Little Eva, you want some treats? I just gave Goldie two treats, but Nancy's eating one of them. Goldie! Eat that, Goldie. It's for you. Eat it, Goldie. Goldie! This is for Goldie. This is for Goldie. Here, Goldie. No, oh, everyone else is eating Goldie's. I just gave little Eva her treats in the cat bed. You could eat them, Eva. Eat your treats, okay? You eat them. Nancy loves these. Here, Richard. Here. Ringo. 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 I just gave Boo more hearts. He's sitting in the sun by the window. It's really nice in the sun. Here's Stella and Splash. I'm gonna give them some more too. One more. I gave three to Splash and three to Stella. Now Splash is eating them. All right, so Splash discovered that he likes these also. So far, pretty much every cat likes these except for Sammy. I just gave Simba some more also. I'm gonna save the rest for later. They could have another snack later. It's 11 p.m. and I'm here with the cats and I just gave them some lobster as a treat. I made some freshly cooked lobster today. It has not been a good day. So I filmed two videos today. And one of them was a cat food recipe and the other one was a Valentine's video. And when I went to edit the video, I realized that the audio was completely messed up, like to the point where I don't even think it's usable. And I filmed it on the camera that I just got back from repair. I got it back from repair, I don't know, maybe a week ago. And, you know, I, I turned it on, I used it. I was like, okay, it's working. I did not check to see if the audio was working. I assumed it would be because the audio did not need to be repaired. Only the lens needed to be repaired. But I guess when they were repairing the lens, then somehow the audio got screwed up. So now when I try to record a video on it, the audio just sounds like there's absolutely like no low end on the audio. It's just like really tinny and it's only on one side. Like it's a drastic difference from the audio prior to the lens repair and the audio after the lens repair. Now, if I take a camera microphone and I plug it into the audio jack, then it sounds good but it's the internal microphone in the camera that sounds absolutely horrible. I am just so not happy about that. So I was looking on Amazon and I found 
a mic that could work. The problem that I have with hooking up external mics, look at Stella. She's looking at me because she didn't like the lobster and she wants me to give her another treat. I'll give you another treat soon, Stella, okay? I'm just, I'm just explaining all the problems that I'm having right now. So what happens is when I'm filming a video of the cat, if I put an external microphone on a camera, the only microphones that I've seen so far are microphones that are like one directional. So for example, if I put a microphone on the camera, I could point it toward the cats and record their sound. Or if I point it toward myself, then I could record my narration, but I have not found a microphone that would do both directions where I could actually get sounds coming from the cats and also a decent quality on myself narrating the video. I finally found one on Amazon today and I don't know if it's a new mic, I have never seen it before but it's on the top seller list, so it's really popular. It has really good ratings, so I'm hoping it'll do what I needed to do, which is be able to record myself talking while recording the cats at the same time, where, like, I don't sound muffled or they don't sound muffled. Like, it's been an either-or situation every time I've tried to use an external microphone, but now... Maybe I won't have to compromise with that and I'll actually have a microphone that I could put on the camera with the messed up microphone so I could actually use it. Right, Stella? I did send an email to the company that did the camera repair for me, but you know, I, I sent it tonight and I'm sure they're not working at the hour that I sent it. So hopefully I'll hear something back from them tomorrow, if not like early next week. But I'm just really not happy about that. And I just wanted to document that. So the cats just had their second Valentine snack of the day, which was some um, freshly cooked lobster tails. I'm going to give the lucky seven some lobster tails. And then if I have any left, I'll give more to these guys. It's 5.28 p.m. And look at Ringo. He's on the couch and he made himself comfortable between these two pillows. He's so cute. I'm just about to leave because I got an email from the camera repair company and they said that I need to send the camera back in for another repair because now the audio is messed up. So I packaged it up. Thankfully, I still have the box and the packaging from when I received it back from the first repair. So it was easy to package it up and I am going to bring it to UPS and have it shipped out today. Uh, UPS is open until around 7 p.m. So I figure I might as well just do it now. And I'll run an errand or two on the way home and then that'll be good. And the cats can continue relaxing and then when I get home later, they will have their dinner a little while later. Here's Nancy. So what's been happening with the Lucky Seven lately is that when it's dinner time, they all just want to take a nap. So I've been letting them take a nap. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to keep them on that schedule because if I was like, okay, everyone, let's eat dinner right now. Stella, Boo, Splash, and Simba would really be happy to eat. Um, versus eating later, but the kittens for some reason like to take a late afternoon nap. They're more active during the day. Stella, Splash, Boo, and Simba really like to take a nap during the day, like earlier in the day, whereas these guys are more active during the day, and then they fall into their nap routine like later in the afternoon. So it would be nice if I could get everyone on the same napping routine which would mean these guys would nap earlier in the day and then everyone could have an earlier dinner. I don't know if you could see what's going on here, but there's at least one cat, if not multiple cats, behind the curtains. Here's Richard. He probably wants to go into one of the bedrooms, but I have to leave, so that's not going to happen. Maybe when I get back, I'll open all the doors. It's 10 p.m. And the cats all have a little crunchy mouse. They haven't had these in a long time. 
there's Simba with his. The cats really like them, except Simba not so much. Here's Stella and Splash. I don't know what happened to Stella's. They're both kind of working on Splash's. But when I filled them up and gave them to the cats, they remembered right away how to use them. Like, there was no hesitation. I gave these to the cats, and they just started flipping them around, getting their crunchies out. So this makes them work for their crunchies. Boo's so funny, he just flips it around. I don't know why Stella and Splash are working on one because they each got a separate mouse. Unless someone flung it so far they can't find it. I don't even know where it is. I see Simba's. Simba's mouse is right near him. Stella had a pink one. I don't know where hers went unless both of them are near her and Splash. Oh, there Stella is. That's the pink one. Well, where's Simba's? Oh, Simba's is to the left of him. What was he, sitting on Stella's? Now Simba has two. So anyway, they're having fun with their little mice right now. Simba's not too good at, like, flipping it around. He just likes to push it around with his nose. Boo might be done with his already. There's Stella and Splash. I like these little mice because it is challenging for them to get the crunchies out of it. The hole that the crunchies come out of is not much bigger than the crunchies are. Sometimes uh, toys like these are too easy for the cats and they get everything out right away. But these are more challenging for them. I just gave the lucky seven this cat it digger, I forget what the real name of it is. So they've had this cat it crunchy tree and Ringo's really good at it, but some of the other ones aren't, like Nancy doesn't like the crunchy tree. So I just found this one, it was in a storage container upstairs and I rinsed it off, wiped it down and I put some crunchies in it. So this will make them work for the crunchies. Right now it's Richard, Goldie and Nancy. And I was down here, I don't know, 15 minutes ago, and Ringo was eating crunchies out of the crunchy tree. So between the two of these little activity things, look at that, Richard just hissed at Nancy. Nancy's not really good at getting crunchies out of these interactive things. She just likes them on a plate. She's like, put them on a plate, let me eat them. She doesn't want to work for them. You okay, Ziggy? You okay, Ziggy? It looks like Richard really likes this one. This one's easy. All you got to do is put your paw in there and take them out. Is Nancy going to be able to do it? The washing machine's on right now if there's a bunch of noise in the background. I 
There she goes. There she goes. Oh, she got him. All right, Nancy got him. She put her paw in the little cup. And there goes Richard. Richard got a bunch. So this is good. This will keep them busy for a little while. Ringo is on top of the cat tower looking out the window. Eva's sitting on the cat tower. Goldie's here watching. And Sammy, it sounds like she's playing with a turbo track somewhere. Yay, Nancy's getting good at it. Richard's good at it. Can Goldie get some out? Or is Goldie just eating what everyone else gets out? Oh yeah, look. Goldie put her paw in there too. All right, good. All right, so I'm glad they're enjoying this. Yay, Goldie. It is 6.24 p.m. I am trying to scoop litter boxes. And Boo's been hanging out in his room today. I just got home a little while ago. And I opened the door to his room because I'm scooping litter boxes. And I opened the door to, you know, all the bedrooms to let the cats out. And sure enough, Nancy has to come in here and look at Boo. So she was right here when I happened to be walking past the room. Boo was here. There was some growling and hissing going on, so I figured, let me turn the camera on and see what happens. And of course, Nancy walked away. She left the room, so that's good. What are you doing, Nancy? Come on, you want to help me? Nancy, you want to go downstairs and help me with the litter boxes downstairs? Because that's where I'm going next. I did the three up here, okay? Let's go downstairs, Nancy. Come help me. It's 11.20 p.m., and there's Ringo. He's looking out the window. Sammy was just looking out the window with him, and I went upstairs to get the laser pointer, and I looked out the back door, and there's a tabby cat sitting near the back steps. That's what they're looking at. I don't know if the cat's still there, but I went up into Boo's room, and I was trying to show Boo the cat, and um, Boo wasn't really interested but the cat was still there. So I don't know if the cat walked away or if the cat's still there, but it's a tabby cat. It looks a lot like Richard. Um, I don't know which cat it is. It's not Bob for sure. I know it's not Bob. So I don't know which one it is, but uh, these cats, the Lucky Seven, love to look at the outside cats um, from this window and one of the other windows down here. And the outside cats are really interested in, you know, looking at these cats through the window also. So I am going to shut the lights off and we're going to have some laser pointer fun. I have a gecko video on the TV for the cats right now. And I'm probably going to hang out down here. Maybe I'll fall asleep for a little bit on the sofa. But uh, I'm just going to come down and spend some time with the Lucky 7. Good morning, Boo. It is 8 a.m. I just looked outside and I see that we got a few inches of snow. 
Good morning, Stella. Good morning, Splash. It's 10 a.m. I'm brushing the Lucky Seven before they eat their breakfast. I just gave Ziggy a whole bunch of brushes and she was in the tunnel. I wanted to show you Ziggy in the tunnel because she's so cute. Sammy. I don't think I brushed Sammy yet today. I brushed Nancy and I brushed Ziggy. Ziggy loves being brushed. Right, Ziggy? This is one of Ziggy's favorite things. She loves being combed and she loves being brushed. Right, Ziggy? Now I brushed Nancy and I have to brush Richard. Will Goldie let me brush her? Come here, Richie. Sometimes Richard likes being brushed and sometimes he not so much. This is all the cat hair I got off three cats this morning, so it's definitely shedding season. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Richard. Okay. It's 7.30 p.m. And look at what's going on in here. So Boo's on his bed on the day sofa. Simba is in the tower. And Nancy is looking at something outside. The way she was looking at the window, I, I definitely think there's a cat out there. Who's outside? Who's outside, Nancy? You see somebody? Do you see somebody outside? Oh yeah, there's a cat. You see the cat? I think it's Bob. Yeah, that's Bob. So Bob's out by the water bowl. Ringo just threw up here, um, and that's why I got up to see what the cats are doing, because I'm actually working on my computer right now. And as soon as I saw what he threw up, I was like, oh, okay, this is not good. It means he ate a plant, which means he probably knocked over a plant. Because to me, that looks like a piece of one of my palm trees. And here it is. It's on the floor of my bedroom near the water bowl for the cats. He knocked it off of the TV stand. I have one of these on each side of the TV. And, yep, he tried to eat it. And in the past, Ziggy tried to eat it, and she also threw up a piece of it. So these are not good for cats to eat. Anyway, I'm going to clean this up right now. Meanwhile, look who's on top of the armoire. It's Splash and Stella. It's 9.51 p.m., and Nancy has been crying for crunchies. I gave the cats homemade raw cat food tonight. It was chicken. And then... Um, when I was out this afternoon, I went to Stu Leonard's and I bought one of their all-natural rotisserie chickens. That's what the cats loved when they were all in the recovery room, like when they were recovering from their TNRs. And we haven't had one for a while, so I bought one. And I put some pieces of chicken on their plate after they ate their meal. Sammy enjoyed some of it. I think Goldie ate a few pieces. I don't know who else ate some, but, you know, Nancy has just been crying, crying, crying for crunchies. So what I had done the other day was I bought a bag of the Zeewee Peak. It's dry cat food. It's made different than, you know, typical, typical dry cat food is. And uh, I believe it's lower in carb than uh, standard dry cat food. To me, it's more like a little tiny pieces of jerky. That's what it reminds me of. So that's what I put in there. And Nancy seems to be enjoying it. So if I could kind of make a switch um, from the crunchies to that, then I think that would be good. Because Nancy has been eating way too many crunchies lately. It's like all she wants to eat is dry cat food. 
I give them plenty of wet cat food and she'll wait for everyone else to eat and sometimes she'll go back and eat more but for the most part she just always wants crunchies especially at night not during the day much but at night she always wants crunchies so if I could uh, use the Zwi Peak I think that's the name of them um, instead of what they had been getting I think that could be a good switch although this um, this food is much more expensive it was like a small bag it was like I think it was like $35 for like a small bag and I was like wow that's really expensive I thought the origin was expensive and I believe that one is like I think it's like $65 for a 12 pound bag something around there that's like around there not exact but you know around there and this one was like $35 for, I don't even think, I mean, what was it, like one pound? I have to look at the bag. This is a 14 ounce bag. 14 ounce bag, but it says it's 96% chicken organs and New Zealand green mussels. Yeah, this is really expensive. You okay, Nancy? Look what's going on here. That's Ringo and Lil Eva, they're looking out the window. What are they looking at? It's dark outside. So if there's a cat outside, they haven't been moving around much because I do have motion sensor lighting. So if there's motion outside, the lights will go on. So, I mean, there could be a cat out there, but maybe it's just like sitting somewhere. It is 11 a.m. And I've been brushing the Lucky 7 Ziggy got brushed, Richie got brushed a little bit, and Nancy's been getting brushed, and I've been having a conversation with Nancy, which made me remember to turn the camera on. So what I've been telling Nancy is that she is a princess, and because she is a princess, she has to behave like a princess, right, Nancy? Princesses behave in a certain way, and they're very nice to people, because as part of a royal family, they have to have manners and etiquette, right, Nancy? And they always have to behave, especially around other family members. Well, Nancy's telling me right now that she only has to behave when she's in public <laughs> because the royal family really only has to behave when they're in public. And, you know, in private, she could do what she wants, especially when she's around her family. But that's not right, Nancy. A princess should behave all of the time, all of the time, because you know why? She has to set a good example to all of her children and to her brothers and her sisters. She has to set a good example. A princess has to always behave, Nancy. Right, Ziggy? Ziggy, are you a princess also? Ziggy says she doesn't want to be a princess. She's happy being Ziggy. Right, Ziggy? Ziggy loves being brushed. Anyway, I'm going to continue having conversations with Nancy. I also need to find her princess dress. I haven't found it yet. I haven't really had a chance to look for it, but I still want to do that. It's 8.20 a.m. and here's Simba. And for breakfast today, the cats had the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Beef Bites. And the last time the cats had these, Simba threw up. This is the first week they've been trying that flavor of food. And Simba ate it the other day and I thought he ate it, you know, too much too fast. And that's why he threw up. So this morning when I fed the cats, I made sure that I monitored them so that no one cat was eating too much. So they each only had their own portion. And this is what Simba just did. Don't walk on it, Stella. Stella, don't walk on it. So he vomited in multiple locations on this little throw rug. And he also vomited on that toy, which is now going to have to go in the garbage. That was one of their Halloween toys. So now I get to clean this up. And he also vomited here. He was going to vomit on the runner, but thankfully I was able to move him. So he only vomited here on the floor. I'm sorry you feel sick, Simba. I will not be buying that food ever again, okay? No more. It is mail time. I am here with some packages and I am here with Nancy. There's a few other cats in the room. I think Sammy and Ringo are here. And yeah, there's Ringo. Hey, Ringo. Hey, Nancy. 
and we're just about to open some mail and this mail time might look a little bit different because my camera is back in the repair shop and I don't have a tripod for my phone. So I am just kind of filming this um, without one. So uh, I'm not gonna be able to open these on camera. I'll open them and then I'll show you what I got. Right, Nancy? Nancy's gonna help me. Okay, Nancy. Is Ringo gonna help me too? Ringo stretching. Hey, Ringo. Look at this, look at this. Look at this. All the doors are open, so all the cats are allowed to freely mingle with each other right now. Look what the cats got. Isn't this adorable? Look how cute this is. Nancy, move out of the way. Nancy, move out of the way. This is a Cat Stages gift cat tunnel. It is a festive tunnel for kitties to hide and play. It includes a catnip toy. Ringo's checking it out. Maybe they smell the catnip. Isn't that adorable? And look, look at that. There's two of them. So I could put one upstairs and one downstairs. And look who's here. Look who showed up. Look how smart Sammy is. She knows. She heard the word tunnel. She said, I am claiming these tunnels before anyone else can get to them because Sammy is the guardian of the tunnels. Thank you very much. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Ringo. Oh, he's going for the toy. You okay? What are you going to do, Nancy? You going to play with the toy? Nancy wants the toy also. You good, Nancy? I think the reason why Nancy doesn't get along with Boo is because Nancy wants to be the star of the show. Nancy says she's the star, not Boo. There's Ziggy. Hey, Ziggy. Now they're each going to take a toy. Sammy says they could have the toys as long as she has the tunnels. She's right here next to me. Hello. There's four cats here right now. Hey, Ziggy. Hey, Nancy. Oh, there's, there's Sammy. Everyone has to share, okay? Well, these tunnels are a big hit already. And these came with a card. They say, hey, Valentine, you're silly and fun, cool and smart, and very, very loved. Isn't that a cute card? And it looks like a baby Stella on the card. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Ziggy. Let's see what it says inside. It says, to the lucky ferals, you're simply perfect. Happy Valentine's Day. Love from a fan and grateful viewer. You make my heart smile. Please give Boo a bop on the nose from me and a pat on the tail for Stella and Simba and blow kisses to Splash and the rest. X's and O's. Thank you so much for this lovely card and for these awesome tunnels for the cat. Sammy wants me to open the tunnel already. Okay, Sammy, I'll, I'll open it for you, okay? Isn't that cute? It looks like a present. And then the cats can go inside. And Nancy went straight inside of the tunnel. Sammy going to go in there with her? Sammy, you going in the tunnel also? No? Just going to smell it?
Okay, so the cats really enjoy these tunnels. Thank you so much. Hey, Nancy. Oh, look at this. Look. That's Ringo. He came almost right up to me. Sometimes Ringo forgets himself and he comes close to me. And then when he remembers what he's doing, he backs away. Okay, Nancy, you want to open up another package? We have another package here from Sharon. I don't know what she sent, so let's open this one. And we have a note. It says, hi, LF. Hope the lucky 11 are doing great. Just wanted to send a few things, but I think I might have to explain the strange looking round things. Laugh out loud. I wonder if you could product test them for me. They are covers for the top of a cat tree tower. I am hoping they fit. I thought they may work to make them comfortable and they would be easy to clean. Just pop them off. The only thing is they might be too thick and make less room for the kitties. They are reversible. If you wanted to try them, please let me know. I am thrilled. We have not had a lot of snow this winter so far. Can't wait until spring. Hugs and purrs, Sharon and Sunday. All right, let's check them out. So this must be the cat tower cover. Isn't that nice? That looks really cool. And then here is the other side. And then there's like beige inside. Nancy's going to check it out. What are you guys doing? Let's see if it fits on a cat tower. That's what it looks like. It fits on the cat tower. The question is, will one of the cats go on it? Is Sammy going to test it? Oh, okay. So Sammy's the smart one. She's going to test it. It fits on very nicely. I think I put it on right. And there's plenty of room for the cats to lay in it. And, you know, once they lay in it, it'll all get, like, flattened down. You going to try it, Nancy? Nancy, you want to try it? I love the colors because it matches my living room. You going to go on the cat tower? I'm sure the cats will go on to it. Sometimes it just takes them a little bit to get used to things. Here's Simba. I just got him out of the bedroom. This is his favorite cat tower, and that's why I want him to test it. And Simba says it's very comfortable. See how quickly he just settled into the cat tower? He loves this cat tower. This is like where he goes every evening after dinner. He ain't. He hangs out here. Thank you very much, Sharon, for thinking of us with these cat tower covers. I'll let you know how they do after they've been on the cat towers for a while. And just to give you an idea of the reversible fabric, so this is the other side. This is a beige side. Sammy jumped into this one right away. It's a good distance from Simba, like he's over there. So she could lay here and not have a problem with him, even though he did growl a little. But... It looks nice either way. It looks nice with the beige. And it looks nice with the pattern. Simba looks nice in it, right, Simba? Sharon also sent a blanket. Isn't that pretty? It's like a beige blanket with all of these cats on it. Simba's growling a little bit. And here's another blanket to match the cat tower covers. I just put on the cat tower and Nancy says she really likes this blanket. She's been pawing at it. It looks really pretty. It looks very royal. And here's another cat tower cover and this matches the, uh, the cat blanket and there's another cat tower cover. So I think what I'll do is I'll put these on the cat towers in the other room because I do need to put the round mats that have been in the cat towers in the laundry. It's been on my to-do list for the past few days. So this gives me a really good excuse to tackle it right now. Thank you so much, Jaren. Hey, Ziggy. And this looks like a bag of toys. You want to check them out? Yeah, the cat's got a bag of toys to play with. Aren't these cute? Look, they're like little pillows 
but then they have like dangling things on each corner. You want one? Want to check it out, Ziggy? Sammy, you want one? Sammy's already in the tunnel. Maybe Simba wants one. Simba, Simba, you want a toy? You want a toy? He's growling at Ziggy. It's okay, Ziggy. It's okay. Here's Nancy. She said she wants all the toys. Relax, Nancy. Being oh, Nancy. Nancy, relax. Thank you so much, Sharon, for these goodies for the cats. I'm definitely going to put these other two covers on the other two cat towers. And thank you for the blankets. I am constantly using blankets. And actually, I think both, I think this one will look really nice on the sofa in this room or even on one of the chairs. And the same thing for this one. So thank you so much. Oh, look at the back on this one. It has a really nice like brown and beige pattern, or is that brown and white? Uh, thank you so much, Sharon. Look at Sammy. She's in the tunnel. She says everyone else had their fun, and now she has to get down to some serious guarding of the tunnel. Right, Sammy? You okay, Sammy? You all right? You good? You good, Sammy? Sammy is so cute. Sammy, you're so cute. There's a cat outside. I don't know which one it is. It's not Bob. I can't tell if it's a tabby cat or a black cat but it was smelling the door to the shelter and it looked like it was gonna go in the shelter. But now it's kind of like down here, like you can't really see it. It's almost like it's by the window um, looking into downstairs. I don't know for sure, but Boo's here. Boo's keeping an eye on things. So it's dark right now. I don't wanna turn the light on. But I want to tell you about what happened in Boo's room a little while ago. So maybe like an hour ago, I was walking past Boo's room and I saw some cats. I saw their silhouette near the window. I said, who is that? So I turned the lights on and it was Splash, Nancy, and Boo. And um, like Boo's right here, but this is where Splash was. And then Nancy was here and then Boo was here. So they were like each about four feet away from each other, but they were peacefully coexisting and I was so proud of them. I'm like, oh, this is so great. They're, they're getting along, they're hanging out together in Boo's room. Well, next thing I know, a little while goes by and I'm sitting in the living room on the sofa and Boo's on the play rug. And I didn't realize it, but Nancy had walked into the room and I don't know where she was, I think she was near um, Stella's little castle house thing. And all of a sudden I hear Boo growling and I'm like, what's going on? Oh, Nancy must be here. That's why he's growling. Well, the next thing I know, Nancy decides that she is gonna charge at Boo. So she just starts running towards Boo, full speed ahead. And when Boo saw that, he took off and he just ran into his room. I think he even ran under the day sofa. And I was like, what is going on? So then I made Nancy leave this room. I was like, you don't need to be here. You don't need to be chasing Boo. And I made her go downstairs and she knew she did something wrong. Sometimes I think she does it on purpose just to get attention so that I could put her downstairs. I should also mention that... I did put her gown on her today, so she did wear her princess dress for a little while. But then what she did, this is how smart she is. So she was wearing a princess dress up here, and then she decided, well, I'm just gonna go downstairs. So I let her downstairs, and I didn't follow her downstairs because I was cleaning up the kitchen at the time. 
So after a little while, oh, look at this. There's, look, look at this, look at this. That's Bob. So Bob, Bob must see the other cat. I don't see the other cat, but Bob must see the other cat. Uh oh, I hope there's not gonna be a fight. Boo's looking, Boo's looking also. So what I was saying about Nancy is she went downstairs with her dress on and then like 10, 15 minutes later, I went downstairs and she had her dress off. Her dress was underneath Boo's old day bed, which is downstairs. So somehow Nancy got herself out of the dress. The Velcro around her waist uh, was undone. So somehow she got that off. And then she just slipped her head out of the neck area. I don't see a cat down here at all. But this looks like Bob. I mean, it's a big cat with a white bib. I hope his eyes are okay. His left eye looks a little weird. Boo's staring at him. You're gonna leave? He's walking away, okay. Hopefully there will not be any fights. Okay, Boo? You all right, Boo? Okay. It's 8.30 a.m. Here's Boo. I want to show you what I just saw outside. Look at this. That's Bob. Bob is sitting in front of the cat shelter. I don't know if Bob has been staying in the cat shelter or stayed in the cat shelter last night. I don't know. But maybe Bob has started to claim the cat shelter because of the other cat that's been coming by. So last night there was another cat. I don't know if it was a tabby or a black cat. And it was hanging out like around here. And, you know, Bob was hanging out here and, and Bob saw the cat. Bob did not look too happy with the cat. So I'm thinking that maybe since the cat was here and Bob saw it here, maybe Bob's getting a little bit of protective of the shelter. You know, even if Bob has only used the shelter occasionally, cats can get, you know, territorial and protective about things. And maybe that's what's happening. I mean, I don't know. It could be completely different than that, but like, what are the chances I'm going to look outside and there's Bob sitting right outside the shelter like he owns it. Like, this is my house and I'm just going to get some morning sun right here. <laughs> Meanwhile, here's Boo. Hey, Boo. Okay, let's open the window a little bit, Boo. It's time for our morning routine. I open up the blinds and let as much light in here as possible. And I open the window a little bit. It is about 32 degrees out right now, so I'm not opening it too much, like a few inches. Even just opening it that much, I'm already cold. But once I get moving, then I'll warm up. Good morning, Simba. Simba woke me up at what time, Simba? Four o'clock in the morning? Four o'clock in the morning for some treats? Good morning, Stella. Good morning, Splash. It's 10.07 a.m. and I'm down here with the Lucky Seven and we've been having some playtime with the stick with the toothbrush on it. And they like chewing on it, so that's good. I don't know where the rest of the toothbrushes are. Like at one point I gave each of them a toothbrush, but I never really kept up with it because it was just, it's been hectic here the past few months. So I'm trying to get everyone back on a play schedule and I'm realizing that um, I need to, like, vary up the playtime. Like, I can't just do wand toys and, um, like, I can't just do laser pointers all the time. These guys love laser pointers. Absolutely love it. So I've been doing a lot of laser pointers with them. But I think it's good to have some more, like, up-close playtime with them. Especially, look, there's Eva. 
I'm thinking maybe more playtime like this. Yeah, it's a, like a wand toy, but it's not like a long wand toy, like when they're chasing a bird on a wand toy. So I'm much closer to them right now. And of course, you know, Ziggy, Richard, Nancy, Sammy, I can pet them. It's the ones that I want to get near are Goldie, Eva, and Ringo. And Eva has not let me pet her again. Like after that day where I got to pet her for so long up by the window, she hasn't let me pet her again. See, she backs away if the toy comes too close to her. It is 8.50 a.m. Good morning, Stella. She slept here last night on this very comfy cat tower covered with the new cat tower cover. And this is where Splash slept last night. He slept in this cat tower. I think the cats really like these covers because they're super soft. And they make, like, the top of this cat tower into, like, a cat bed. And... They kind of soften the edges of the cat tower. Do you see how this cat tower cover just kind of like softens this edge, softens the inside edges? So I think the cats really like these. And I was going to show you Simba because he slept here and he was still here just less than a minute ago. But when he heard me filming, he jumped down. Simba loves these also. Good morning, Simba. How are you today? Did you sleep good? Good morning, boo. It's 10.20 a.m. I took the scratch and rolls out for the cats yesterday, and they've been enjoying them. Hey, Stella. And I just put this toy in the middle of them. I'm thinking maybe this would be a, a good kind of setup for them, but then I'm thinking no, because now they're not going to play with the toy. They're just going to sit in the scratch and rolls and watch the toy. It's 10.45 a.m. I finally came downstairs to feed the Lucky 7. We're having a bit of a late start today. And this is some packing paper that I gave them to play with um, like two days ago. And they've been enjoying it. There's pieces of it all over the floor. They've been tearing it up quite a bit. And Sammy was kind of hiding in it right now. Hey, Ziggy. Hey, Ziggy. So I'm going to brush everyone first. And we're going to have some playtime, and then they're going to eat. Right, Richard? Good morning, Richard. It is 1.12 p.m. I just opened up my freezer that I use for cat food, and I have a serious problem with it. So it appears that everything in the freezer has defrosted. I don't know why. So the last time I took out a container of food for the cats was probably at least 48 hours ago. I didn't take anything out yesterday and I didn't take anything out um, the day before. Maybe I did take it out the day before. I don't remember exactly when I took it out. But I remember taking out a container of food and looking at it and thinking, that's weird. It had like ice crystals on top. And I was like, was the door not shut all the way? So I remember taking it out and then specifically making sure that the door of the freezer was shut. Well, today... I just opened it and all this ice has like fallen off of the shelves because it did need to be defrosted, but I hadn't defrosted it yet and everything is soft. I mean, it's still very cold, but it's soft. And I also had some vegetables in here that have completely defrosted. So now I have to take everything out of this freezer 
and clean it up and see what's going on. Now here on the bottom, I actually have a turkey. I have like a 12 pound turkey and the turkey is still, it's still firm. It's like starting to thaw out, but it's still firm. And the inside of this is really cold. So I want to see, maybe I could rescue, maybe I could rescue this turkey. Like it's totally solid. It's just tiny, tiny bit of soft in some areas, but I'm not happy about this. I don't know if the freezer just stopped working. It was definitely shut, but I don't know what's going on. I have six pounds of meat cooking on the stove. I just put everything into a large skillet and it's just been simmering away. Uh, quite a lot of water has been coming out of the meat. I don't normally cook a lot of meat, so this is kind of new for me. But I'm just going to make sure everything is really well cooked. And then I am going to freeze the cooked meat for some future meals for the cats. I combined chicken and beef, so this will be something new for them. It is 10 a.m. And for breakfast today, the cats are having more of the food that was rescued from the freezer. This is some turkey-based cat food, and it's been in the refrigerator since yesterday. And tonight for dinner, they're going to have some chunky beef that has been in the refrigerator since yesterday. Usually my limit for keeping raw food defrosted in the refrigerator is about 48 hours, so that would make sense. Thankfully, I got to the freezer in time to save the food because I really think if another day or two had gone by, uh, I would have had to throw it all out. But there was still lots of ice in the freezer and the frozen turkey definitely helped keeping everything in the freezer cold. So when I rescued all the cat food, I made sure to check the temperature of it and make sure that it was still very, very cold. Otherwise, I, I would have tossed it out. Everyone ate dinner last night from food that was in the freezer and nobody had any problems. So I'm assuming that the rest of the food is safe based on last night's experience. We also have to remember that cats are obligate carnivores and as such, their stomach acid is much stronger than human stomach acid. So that's why cats can eat things that would make humans sick. And I'm definitely not saying feed bad food to cats or feed them rotted food or anything like that. I'm just mentioning the fact that the reason why cats can eat raw meat and not get sick from it, whereas humans would most likely get sick from it, is because cats have a very different digestive system than humans. And it is their strong stomach acid that helps to kill off any harmful bacteria or pathogens in the food that they are eating. And that is one of the key differences between carnivores and humans. It's 5.51 p.m. Look at Ziggy. She's laying on the cat tower with the comfy cover on it. She's so comfortable. And here's Nancy. She's so comfortable. Here's Boo. And all the doors are open, so the cats have been all mingling this afternoon. So far, there haven't been any disagreements, but I don't want to jinx anything. And there's Richard. I wonder if he sees a cat outside. If I go over to look out the window, he'll freak out and run, so I'm not going to do that. Here's Stella. She's in this cat tower bed. Hey, Stella. I vacuumed all of the rooms this afternoon, so all the cats were not too happy with that. That's why they're all kind of um, not in their usual locations. Usually Stella's in my room somewhere. Here's Simba, he's on top of the armoire. He stayed here when I was vacuuming. I don't know where any of the other cats are. Oh, Splash is underneath Boo's day sofa. Here's Sammy, she's downstairs. Here's little Eva, she's in her favorite bed, which is Stella's royal cat bed. And there's Goldie near little Eva on top of the table. It's 8.36 p.m. and I wanted to show you how nicely Ringo fits on this round cat blanket. Except now he's licking his butt. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard. It's about 8.30 p.m. 
Look at little Eva, she's looking at me. And I'm just about to feed the Lucky Seven. The OG Four just ate their dinner. And we're having chunky beef tonight with sardines and a hard boiled egg. And the new supplements I just got in the mail. I just ordered more from um, Pet Health and Nutrition Center. I had uh, ordered some of their supplements way back when um, Ditto was here and I was helping Ditto. And they have some really, really nice supplements and I like to add it to the homemade raw food that I make. So I just opened some new containers today. There's Ringo, he's taking a bath. Who is that with him? Oh, that's Sammy. Sammy likes to boss Ringo around. She's the littlest one and he's the biggest one. But she's one of the more aggressive cats and he's one of the more passive cats. But he loves Sammy. They're buddies. You know, if he's the daddy, Sammy's his daughter. Right, Ringo? And there's little Eva and Goldie. Little Eva and Goldie have been hanging out together because they both are, you know, two of the shy cats. Right, Eva? I still have to work on getting through to them more because Eva has not let me pet her again since that other day. There's Ringo. Ringo's very phonogenic. Hey, doing Ringo? He's so handsome. Ringo, you're so handsome. You ready to eat dinner? Are you hungry? Eva said she's hungry. Eva can't wait to eat dinner, right, Eva? You hungry? We're going to eat something for dinner? We're having chunky beef. There's Nancy. They hear a car outside. I don't know if you could hear it. It's really loud. How you doing, Richard? Richard, you're so handsome. Okay, you hungry? You wanna eat dinner? Wanna eat dinner, big boy? His hair's getting long now, too. I think all the cats are gonna end up with long fur, like the OG4, except Nancy still has very short fur. It is 9.40 a.m. and the cats just got brushed and they got combed. And now we're having some playtime. Everyone's here except for Splash. He's sitting about eight feet away. But the cats love having their scratch and rolls back. And they love having this toy in the middle of the scratch and rolls. And Boo loves the snake. except today he wants to run into his room. Okay, maybe no one wants the snake. Let's try this one instead. Hey, you want this one, boo? Okay, he wants to play with this one instead.
Stella. Stella. I'm gonna place him here. I definitely have to get a tripod to put like this phone on or I'm hoping my camera gets returned to me any day now. Look, Splash is coming to join us. getting pushed. Isn't that nice Simba and Boar in scratch and rolls right next to each other? I just realized that Boo had some schmutz on his eye. I had to take it off. Stella's back. Look at Simba's face. He knew that was coming. He knew it was coming. What are you doing, Stella? What are you doing? Simba moved over. For breakfast today, the cats are having the cooked cat food that I made with the meat that I rescued from the freezer. So it was chunks of chicken breast and chunks of beef. And I cooked them the other day and then I froze them in meal-sized portions. And then today, when I went to prepare breakfast for the cats, the meat was still like ice cold. Even though it was out all night on the counter to defrost, it was still ice cold. So I had to put the meat in a frying pan and I heated it up and I also added some raw organs which cooked just a little bit in the frying pan. And then once it was warmed through, I put it back in their mixing bowl and I added their supplements and hopefully they'll eat the food. If they do, um, this is great because I have two other containers of this for future meals. And of course, Splash is always afraid of trying new food. So I'm going to move it over here to the living room. Maybe he'll eat it here because this is where he is. Hopefully they're not just licking the gravy. Simba's eating his. He's already like halfway through his. Boo and Stella have been licking the gravy. Hopefully they'll eat the chunks. Here's Stella and Splash. I'm trying to get them to finish their food. Splash is almost done with his. I don't think Stella really likes hers. So I tried putting a churu on Stella's food. She licked up the churu. I tried some Fortiflora. She licked up the Fortiflora. I'm trying to hold back. Hey, I'm trying to hold Boo back because he wants to eat Stella's food. Here's Stella. Not for you, Boo. I'm gonna put you in your room in a minute. Simba has been trying Simba's been trying to eat Splash's food. Eat that, Stella. Okay, let's go in your room, Boo. Come on. Here. 
I was able to lure Boo and Simba into Boo's room with some of those Blue Wilderness treats. So I shut the door. I'm going to leave them in here today and try to get Stella and Splash to finish their meal. Then I'm going to go downstairs. I'm putting what's left of these plates of food in my room. Splash probably ate at least half of his. Stella maybe ate a quarter of hers, but... Maybe they don't like it. Maybe they'll go back and finish it. I don't know. Let's see if the Lucky Seven likes this food so far. What do we have? Six? Six out of the seven are eating it. I think Richard tasted it and then he, he moved away. He's over there. So we'll see how they do with it. Goldie is really enjoying the food. Nancy's going to check out to see what's on Richard's plate. There's Richard. I hope he's feeling okay. He just, he might just be very tired. I don't know how late he was up last night. Sammy's enjoying the food. Ziggy's enjoying the food. Little Eva's enjoying the food. And Ringo, I think he's enjoying the food. What I've noticed is that these cooked chunks of meat have become tougher than the chunks of raw meat that the cats get. So this gives them more, more to chew. Also, this would be more similar to a canned food than the raw food that they usually eat because obviously this is cooked and canned food is cooked. So this would be kind of like a homemade version of a chunky canned food. If Richard doesn't eat anything, I'm going to give him a can of food after everyone else finishes. So Goldie ate hers, and now she's moving on to Richard's plate because Nancy just walked away from Richard's plate, and that's what Nancy left on her plate. Nancy seems to have just wanted to lick all the gravy. Little Eva is just about done. Ziggy's still eating. Ringo still has quite a bit on his plate. And Goldie is walking away from the second plate. One thing I have to say about the Lucky Seven is that they don't tend to gorge themselves on food. Like if someone else leaves food on their plates, like Richard or Nancy, they don't tend to rush right over to it if they're done with their plate and then eat what's left on the other plates. Ringo will sometimes go and, you know, finish what other people have not finished, but he's not a maniac about it like Boo is or Simba is. Like, Boo and Simba are really aggressive when it comes to stuff like that, and these cats aren't, which is nice. I think Sammy had enough. What I normally try to do is give the bigger cats, like Ringo especially, a little bit more food than the other cats get because he's a bigger cat. And so, for example, if Sammy doesn't finish her food, that's fine. She's the smallest cat. Same with like Ziggy or Nancy. They are smaller cats. None of these cats are starving. So if for, if for any reason they want to skip a meal, they can skip a meal. I'm not going to you know freak out. If they stop eating for like a full day, then that's cause for concern. I just put a little bit of a churu on Richard's food, and now he seems interested in it. To me, he's acting like a cat that was up all night and just wants to take a nap. Here. Eat that. Not you, Nancy. Eat that, Richard. It could also be that he just doesn't like the food, like Stella really didn't like it. But he's definitely interested in the churro. Oh, now is he eating some of the chunks? Meanwhile, Nancy and Sammy are licking whatever they can on the outside of the churu. I'm not squeezing it for them. They're just trying to lick whatever they could get off of it.
So now he's gonna eat. Yeah, now he's interested in eating. Ringo's still eating his. I just gave Nancy part of a churu on what was left of her food. Maybe she'll have more interest in it. What she does often is not finish her food. And I think it's because she wants to leave it there to see if anyone else wants it. Because then when no one else eats it, then she goes back and finishes it. That's been a pattern that I noticed with her. Which could be indicative of her being the mommy cat. You don't want to finish it? Ziggy's looking. She's like, I'll finish it. I just gave Goldie a little bit of the churu because her favorite food is anything like that, like any other purees and stuff like that. And there's Ziggy. She licked what was on Nancy's plate. Hey, Ziggy. Hey, cuties. There's nothing left in there, Goldie. You ate it all. And Richard's doing good with his meal, so maybe he just needed a little inspiration to eat it. And these are the other plates, so I'm going to say that this food was a success, except for Stella and Splash, really. And Nancy, she didn't really eat hers, but usually she'll go back. It is 10.20 a.m., and I just set up the automatic feeder for the Lucky 7, and it's so hard to set it up now because as soon as they see me setting it up, all they want to do is rub up against it. And, you know, I have to um, put tape on the bottom of these stainless steel trays to make sure that they don't move on the ground. But I don't have any tape underneath the feeder. It would probably be a good idea to put some tape under the feeder to keep that from moving. But I figure the way it's situated between the two trays, that should be good enough. So hopefully um, now that there's some food coming out of it, they won't keep rubbing up on it. Here's Ziggy. I also took out this fifth litter box and I put a bag of fresh litter in it. I don't know why Ziggy loves doing this, but every time there's fresh litter, she loves rolling around in it. So I also scooped all the litter boxes, so this should be enough litter for them for 48 hours. My plan is to get out of here as early as I can today, hopefully by 11. My goal was by 1030, but it takes longer to get stuff done um, than I usually think it does. So they have a little bit of crunchies now, and the feeder is set to feed them breakfast and dinner and a few snacks. So they have plenty of food. I'm not going to set up the little feeders for them because they'll be fine. I'm not going to be gone that long. Um, I'm hoping to come back tomorrow night. And I say I'm hoping because if there's any kind of issues with the cats or anything, then I might come back sooner. Um, I'm setting up additional cameras down here to keep an eye on things. I usually just check in a few times a day to make sure everything's going, going okay. I'm setting up the feeders for the OG4, and these feeders are more sophisticated. So for dinner today, the cats are getting some Shebas. These are currently frozen. They're getting a chicken Sheba and a turkey Sheba. These should be defrosted by dinner, and they'll be able to eat these. They'll stay good. There's two teaspoons of crunchies. Then for breakfast tomorrow and dinner tomorrow, they're having some crunchies along with some of the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Bites. I'm not giving them too many crunchies because I don't want them gorging and then throwing them up. And this is just a little snack before breakfast the following day because I will be home by then. It's 10.51 a.m. It took me so long to set up the feeders for the cats. These are just some of them. What's happening is these larger five meal feeders, well, they're actually just four meal feeders because you know you can't really put a meal in here because the cats will eat it right away. 
um, they're starting to fail. Um, one of them is having an issue with the push buttons. Um, it's just takes way longer to push the buttons and have the input recognized. And then another one is having an issue where it's not turning around the way it's supposed to turn around. So I was swapping batteries, trying to get things to work. So I'm hoping the four that I have set up will work. And then I also have these little snack feeders set up just in case these big ones don't work. These only have a teaspoon of crunchies in each section. They're set to go off every 12 hours. So uh, the big feeders will give the cats food at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. And then the small feeders will give them a teaspoon of crunchies at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. But it's only good for this afternoon and tomorrow morning, like 1 a.m. in the morning. It's not going to be good tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. But that should be fine because I should be back tomorrow night. And then I have two set up here in Boo's room. And I have the scratch and roll set up here because I know the cats like to sit here and watch the feeders to see when the feeders are going to go off. So that's why I set these up. And I am seriously considering getting another one of the feeders that I have downstairs for the downstairs cats and putting something like that up here for the cats up here because it's just so much easier to set it up. And I would also have to get the splitter to split it onto two separate trays. I don't know if the cats up here would eat it on two separate trays because Boo doesn't like to share. So I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe I would have to get two of those feeders to put up here and um that way there would be four trays and they would each get a tray boo says he really likes that idea he likes the idea of two feeders so they each get their own tray because they don't want to share um but we'll see about that um for now the feeders are set up i just need to get all my stuff together and then i'm leaving boo i want you to promise me you're not going to overeat okay no overeating you just eat one portion that's it okay promise me no overeating no vomiting Okay, Splash, you be a good boy while I'm gone, and I want you to promise me that you're not going to overeat, okay? Just one portion per meal, and that's it. No vomiting, no overeating. Simba, I'm getting ready to leave, and I want you to promise me you're not going to overeat either, okay? Just one portion per meal, that's it. There's plenty of food there. It's all portioned out, okay? You don't have to gorge yourself. Stella, I want you to promise me you're not going to overeat on any of the meals, okay? There's one portion per cat per meal, okay? And there's snacks too. So you don't have to overeat at any one meal, okay? I don't want no vomit. When I come home, I want all the floors to be clear, okay? Nothing on the floors. I want clean floors, okay, Stella? Everyone keeps the food inside of themselves and nobody overeats, okay? It's 1110. I'm just about to leave. Here's Stella. Here's Boo. Here's Splash. There's Simba. All the cameras are set up so I could keep an eye on the cats in every room of the house. Okay, guys, be good. I'll see you tomorrow.